James Ingram. This video was digitized from a 1992 videotape series named V-9202. It was the introductory module to a six-tape set of automatic controls videotapes. In 1992, this material was new, but now in December 2012, there's nothing really new here in this video. It's not already been shown in the approximately 10 large-scale automatic control videos that have been already uploaded. This video does show five trains operating on one main line, plus a hand car bouncing back and forth between two large trains on another main line, plus the long discontinued APS electric eye in operation, which is not on the other videos. The purpose of this videotape is to discuss the principles, operation, and construction of simplified automatic controls for use on LGB display layouts. The purpose of these simplified automatic controls is to permit multiple train operation on the same track, to allow more trains to be operated and thus more viewer interest for a given amount of display layout trackage. For example, this 82-foot long display layout had four long main lines, plus a small circus train loop, plus a point-to-point -point trolley operation. On the four main lines of this layout, we used four automatic block signals, plus an automatic passing siding to operate 11 trains. Each of the three lower loops operated two trains each, for a total of six trains, plus the elevated loop operated five more trains for a total of 11, plus the circus train, plus the trolley. Now let's take a closer look. Let's see if we can identify the 11 trains on this layout. Train number one passing in front, the blue white pass diesel pulling the uh, freight train. Train number two back in the rear inside loop, the black Rio Grande diesel pulling another freight train. Train number three on the elevated loop passing by to the left, the uh, Pennsylvania mogul pulling the Pennsylvania passenger train. Train number four coming up the upgrade, uh, another mogul this time pulling a freight train. Train number five on the outside loop, the uh, red Swiss passenger electric engine pulling a red passenger train. Train number six on the trussels, the uh, black 040 Rio Grande diesel switcher pulling two yellow passenger cars. Train number seven passing down below the elevated in front, the bear trap mogul pull up, pulling a uh, set of green passenger cars. Train number uh, eight on the trussels, the uh, 062 Eurovapor just went by pulling the green, three green passenger cars. Train number nine going into the tunnel, the double headed white pass diesel pulling a string of uh, blue coal cars. These automatic controls can also be used on small display layouts. For example, the small layout in the center of this operation on the green carpet is only 12 foot by 12 foot square. It only has one main line. However, it runs six trains on this one main line using two automatic blocks plus an automatic passing siding.
These automatic controls consist of uh, magnetic type automatic blocks such as shown in this picture. This automatic block is protecting the uh, big long double-headed coal train coming into view right now pulled by the twin white pass diesels. This block protects this train from being overrun by the slightly faster red Swiss electric train. Notice the block there goes to red as this train passes through it. Uh, in a moment now the uh, red Swiss electric train will come along behind this train and be stopped at the block until the coal train gets further around to give it a larger gap between the two trains. I'm going to pause the uh, picture for a moment so we don't have to wait forever to the, for the red train to come along. This hand car shown in here uh, just kind of bounces between the two trains. It doesn't affect the operation of the trains. It just uh, moves, it gets pushed off the block by the red Swiss train when it comes along and eventually catches up to the coal train. But just add basically a third item operating on the outside loop in addition to the two large trains. There comes a Swiss train into view uh, running up against a red block. It'll hit that block and stop and be delayed for a certain period of time until the coal train releases it. So this magnetic type block, uh, as I said earlier, prevents this slightly faster red Swiss passenger train shown in the picture now from overrunning the slightly uh, slower blue coal train. The block just went to green and now this train can start up and proceed. Another type of automatic block signal we can construct is built around using the electric eye. Shown here, the APS technology is electric eye in operation. That eye type block is now tripped to red. We can see a mogul running up against it when the block is red. That mogul is in the slowdown section running slower than normal as it approaches a red block. It's going to stop for a minute briefly until the block times out and then releases it. Now the block is timed out and changed to green. You can see the train starting up, proceeding out of the block. And in just a second after that train leaves, I'll put my hand down on the track and show where the electric eye is located. This unit uses the electric eye, whereas the first unit we looked at, the magnetic block, uses uh, LGB track contacts and magnets on the bottom of the loco. This, there, my, my hand is pointing at the electric eye. That electric eye essentially replaces the track contacts and the magnets. Third type of the device we can talk about, uh, in addition to the magnetic block and the optical block that we looked at a moment ago, is the device sitting in front of us, the automatic passing siding. We can identify the five trains operating on this. Let's call train number one the mogul at the right that's parked. Train number two the mogul that just pulled in. You can see how this basically works. One train comes in and stops and the other train pulls out. A basic flip-flop type of operation. Now this train that's sitting here now will wait till a third train. Let's call that train number three, the Rio Grande diesel that just pulled in. And that comes in and will release train number two. If, you, if this unit is depowered, it essentially acts like a piece of straight track. The trains will just keep right on going through it, and the, uh, the leg of the siding not used can be used to park a train or take a train on or off. Here comes train number four on the left leg, uh, the green steam engine, and you can see it release train number three, which is now leaving. Here's the fifth train pulling into the right leg, the uh, red 2090 cop diesel. It'll stop and release train number four, the uh, green steam engine. Now eventually the, the first train, which is one of the moguls, will come around the, come around the uh, corner back there and release, sense, release this engine eventually. We can also combine the automatic blocks and the automatic passing siding. Here's the other end of this automatic passing siding. You can see the mogul crossing the block right now as it enters a passing siding. The purpose of the block combined with the passing siding like this is basically to protect the passing siding 
from being overloaded. It can only basically handle two trains at one time, so the block has to prevent uh, additional trains from entering the passing side before it clears. Notice this Rio Grande switcher just came into view as being held up by this block briefly till the passing siding clears. And again, notice the uh, green steam engine coming up the block and being stopped. You can see the passing siding is not uh, empty yet. When that passing siding empties out, and there's available an available empty leg, and the block will go green, and that steam engine can pull in, which it's now doing. That same uh, switching system that we were looking at a minute ago, which was configured as an automatic passing siding, can be reconfigured uh, as an automatic route selection system, which is what we're looking at here. You can see the, the switch, which is kind of in the bottom of the picture behind the fence, uh, is a converging switch uh, where the two trains come together. This layout basically comes together at this point we're looking at, then it splits up into two separate routes uh, over on the other side to the right of the picture. Uh, so it's basically an automatic route selection. Trains take an elevated route uh, one time around. The next trip around, they switch to the lower route and keep alternating routes. In this particular example, the uh, automatic block system signals, one of which you see in the center of the picture, there's one of those in each route. One is in the center uh, to the right of that up on the elevated trussels. You can see the second block signal. There's one of those in each route. So this operates four trains, two on each leg at any one time. And you can see, obviously, one train has to have the right of way, and one train has to stop at the converging switch so there's not a derailment. You can see the upper block there. That blue train just started up. The uh, block signals in the middle of the legs uh, hold up the second train on each leg. Over here, you can't quite see where they split, but they, they split into a lower route and an upper route. You can see the green train coming across the uh, upper route. On the lower route is the, the gray train with the uh, crane in it. You can see each train as they go through the block signal, they set it to red. So if there's another train following them, that train has to stop until the first train uh, gets out of the way down at the switch. Notice that red train on the trussels in what we call the slowdown block or the slowdown section of the automatic block. There's a train stop down at the switch to prevent that one from running into it. That block went red and held it back. This is the automatic switching block shown here. This is the newest unit. Uh, I just recently built this, and it's shown here operating on its first display. This is probably the most versatile uh, and useful of all these units for indoor displays. It's one uh, large integrated unit that uh, combines the functions of an automatic passing siding and an automatic block into one unit. It's shown here controlling three trains, which it will do in a pseudo interlocked fashion. It can also control more than three trains if you operate in the juggling mode. Also notice this has rheostats on it to control both the uh, approach speed of trains pulling into it and uh, trains exiting it. The rear rheostat drops the voltage in the two legs of the uh, passing siding so that when trains come in, they come in at a reduced speed. And the uh, front rheostat drops the voltage slightly when the block changes from red to green so that trains pull out at a little slightly reduced speed so they don't yank so hard on the cars.
This is Tom Flynn's five track automatic switching ladder. You can see this basically dispenses five trains uh, out on his layout and brings them back again. This is time lapse photography to skip all the in between shots. Uh, basically, it works its way from left to right. You can see the trains will start from the left with the white pass, work their way across to the right with the uh, RHB that's parked there, then it'll shift back to the first track on the right again. Welcome to my living room. The title of this videotape is Video Textbook for LGB Automatic Display Ideas. Lay. These designs are simple, reliable, entertaining electromechanical devices. In the bottom line, is uh, my own preference for displays is to have as much up and down and tracks crossing over each other as possible and as many trains doing as many things on each track as possible. These ideas or these designs use basically stock LGB parts and stock Radio Shack parts with a couple of exceptions. So they're fairly simple devices to build. You don't need to be an electronic genius or electrical genius. Uh, I